Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the updated version of the Wander Provoke. A while back I did a very in-depth video on the original version of this bag. I actually still have that bag, it's held up very well over the years and it's still one of my favorites for when I have to carry a little bit more gear. I just love the flexibility that it offers. If you want to see all the ways that you can use the accessories that Wandered has for the Provoke, I definitely recommend you check out that original video. I'll link to it in the description below. In this video, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the bag and calling out all the updates that Wandered has made. I really like that they took more of an evolutionary approach with this bag as opposed to making a bunch of huge changes. They just kind of made a bunch of little changes that really create a better overall experience. So I really enjoyed testing it out. I'm also going to be talking about how this compares to some of the other great camera bags that I've enjoyed recently. But before jumping in, I want to thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, the look here is pretty much unchanged from the original. It would actually be kind of hard to tell that there was even a new version of the bag just by looking at it. And this has a pretty functional vibe. It's got a lot of straps and attachment points. It also has the tote handles at the top. And this is a roll top bag, so it's not minimal by any means. And the aesthetic has never been my favorite. You know, I much more prefer something like Wandered's Duo Day Pack, which looks like a minimal tech backpack. It's a lot simpler. But because of the functionality that this brings, I think it works very well, particularly if you're taking this into the outdoors for some exploring on a hike or even for walking around a city. Moving into the materials, the bag feels very ruggedly built. I've been using the original version of this for the past couple of years and it has held up very well. On the exterior, you have this tarpaulin material that feels like it's gonna offer a ton of weather resistance. One thing I've noticed with the tarpaulin material like this that I've seen on a few different bags is that it can tend to get a little bit marked up, especially when you have kind of sharper items on the inside of the bag, but those usually wipe away pretty easily and it definitely feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage. On the bottom of the bag and at other points on the exterior, you have this 1680D nylon, which feels really rugged. And then you have some nice YKK zippers all throughout that feel like they're gonna offer a lot of weather resistance. They have zipper garages. And then it's nice that this is a roll top bag, which always adds a little bit of extra protection from water. And you also have a removable rain cover that you can store on a pocket on the bottom in case you happen to get caught in more of a downpour. Continuing along the outside, you see many of the same things that we saw in the original, so I was happy to see that it has the same external water bottle pocket, which offers a nice amount of space. Currently what I have here is the same 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other daily bag videos, and it has this nice system that provides some elasticity, so if you have a thicker water bottle, it should be able to fit in here okay. This may also be a good spot to place something like a tripod, and I really like that this is one of those compartments that you can zip up when you're not using it to give the bag a cleaner look. And then on each side of the bag, you have some compression straps, which is going to be great when pairing with this pocket to maybe secure a tripod a little bit better, or you can attach something like a jacket. In addition to the compression straps, you also have some attachment points along the front that are going to be great to pair with the accessory straps that Wandered sells. If you want to get a good idea of how these work, definitely check out the previous video that I did for the Provoke. I show them in a lot more detail, but you have attachment points at the bottom so that you can use the compression straps to, you know, maybe put something like a sleeping bag or a larger tripod, and then along the front for something like a skateboard or your yoga mat. So I really like the versatility provided by that system here. If you just buy the base package of the Provoke, it doesn't include those straps, but I definitely recommend getting them. They're super useful and they're easy to remove. I really like how one has implemented them and then at the top you have the tote handles which is so distinctive of the provoke line of bags and this has been improved a little bit the aesthetic is the same but the magnet that's been added here is much much stronger than the original that was one of the bits of feedback that I had it was always frustrating that they kind of just fell open so these really secure strongly but it's still easy enough to open when you want to get into the bag and the tote handles work very well for carrying the bag when you don't want to wear it on your back you know, they offer a nice amount of padding, and then I really like that they've included their uh, kind of mantra here on the handles, wander more, worry less, always good things to keep in mind. Moving into the capacity, the version that I have here is the 21 liter version, which was the same one that I reviewed in my original video. And to me, this is a really great 
daily bag size. It's able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me, including some lightweight camera gear. And because of the roll top at the top, I still have some extra space for if I wanna to toss in a jacket, a lunchbox, or even wanna use this for light travel. And I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it still maintains a pretty slim silhouette, making it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit, and carrying on to domestic and international airlines. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. This is really one of the biggest changes that has been made to the Provoke, and I really like the updates here. The straps feel very, very soft right out of the box. On the inside, they have this meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. And then they also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into my shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. On the straps, you also have this webbing that you can use to attach accessories with something like a carabiner. I do believe that the prior version of the Provoke had kind of an elastic band that was meant to pair with a lens cap, and I thought that was a really interesting addition, so I'm kind of sad that that's not here anymore, but this works pretty well, and it gives you a little bit more versatility, potentially, and then you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. The system that's used here has been updated. This is interesting. This is kind of the same rail system that we saw on the Moment Travel Wear Collection. So it has this clip that you can just kind of slide in and it works pretty well. It's fairly easy to get it on and off, but I would worry about how well this clip is gonna hold up over the longer term if I uh, attach it and disattach it very regularly. Down at the bottom, you have two loops that you can pair with a removable waist belt that Wandered sells with the bundle version of the Provoke. And the waist belt works very well, particularly if you have to carry a lot of camera gear. I don't know how necessary it is for this size of the bag, but once you get into the 31 liter and 41 liter size, it might be a little nicer to have that. It's great that you can take it on and off completely. And then moving into the back panel, this has also been updated. And the original Provoke wasn't uncomfortable, but I do love this back panel much more. The padding is soft. It has the same meshy material that we saw on the strap. So it has a ton of breathability. And then you have the padding nicely elevated to create these air channels to provide a lot of airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. So really love the improvements made here. And then they've also added a luggage passer to allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. One last update that I wanna call out on the back paneling is with the hidden passport compartment that was found on the original. So it had this kind of flatter compartment that had a zipper that went up and around so that you can open it flat. The zipper here is actually hidden behind the luggage passenger, so it's really hard to have a chance to see it if you're not actually looking for it. So I like how you know concealed that actually is, and then this pocket is also a little bit bigger, so it's gonna give you a little bit more flexibility with what you can store. Currently what I have in here is just a field notes notebook, which fits in there very comfortably. You can see there's plenty of leftover space if you wanna toss in your passport, maybe a flatter wallet, or some extra cash. Jumping into the organizational options, the layout hasn't been changed too much. There's still a nice balance of pockets all throughout the bag. So starting off here on the side, you have kind of a smaller, quick access area, again, with the very well protected zipper and zipper garage. And this just offers a nice amount of space for something smaller that you wanna be able to reach a little bit more quickly. It has a decent amount of volume and on the inside it has a little lanyard with a plastic clip that's gonna be a great spot to hold something like your keys or a multi-tool. And then at the top, you have a quick access pocket. You have to kind of loosen up the tote handles to be able to see it, another well-protected zipper. And this was you know, on the original version of the bag, but I feel like it's been improved a little bit here. It offers a nice amount of space for you know any of those items that you need to toss in while you're going through TSA or that you wanna be able to grab quickly. It offers enough space for something like a lightning cable and a power brick to charge my tablet and my phone. I also tossed in my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. And I like that this pocket has this soft fleece lining on the inside, which is gonna help prevent against scratching and it's gonna be great for whenever you toss in something like your phone or your sunglasses without their case. Now with this pocket, you do kind of poke into the main volume of the bag. So you wanna keep that in mind as you're packing everything out. But in general, the pocket feels a little bit more durable and well integrated than it did on the original. Moving on to the front of the bag, you have a larger and taller quick access pocket. So this is a very simple area that just offers space for anything, again, taller that you need to store and grab quickly. So things like notebooks or magazines. 
and it comes up a decent amount. This is an area where as you start to pack out the main compartment, you probably run out of volume a little bit, but it's still enough volume to be usable. In here, I just tossed in a few items that you know I normally like to have floating around. So at the bottom, I have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. And then I also tossed in a full-size moleskin notebook. And the last thing that I have in here is this little pouch from Side by Side, which I featured in a lot of my videos recently, which has some masks and some hand sanitizer. On the inside, as you can see, there's no sort of internal organization, which I would have really liked to have seen in this updated version is maybe some slip pockets just to take better advantage of the space because it's such a tall compartment. Anything that you place in here is just kind of fall towards the bottom. So it would be nice to have seen some just pockets all throughout, similar to what we've seen on bags like the Moment Travel Wear Backpack or the Evergood CPL. They have a similar long compartment, but there's a few pockets within that just make it a little bit easier to reach whatever you need to more quickly. The next area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the main compartment. But before jumping into that, I did wanna call out that the bag has a quick access pocket on the side. You know, this is very common in many camera bags so that you can reach your camera gear a little bit more quickly if you don't wanna take your bag all the way off. So it pairs nicely with Wander's accessories and camera cubes. In my case, I don't have a camera cube in here at the moment. I'll show that a little bit later. It's great for just reaching any items that are closer to the bottom of the bag that I wanna grab quickly. On the flap, you also have a little zipper pocket that you can use to store memory cards. There's a few kind of mesh and elastic areas here to keep a few of those stored. And then you have some extra volume if you wanna to toss in a dongle or anything a little bit more sensitive, this might be a good place to store it. So really like having this side access zipper. I know that there are some camera bags nowadays that are coming out without this. Most notably the Peter McKinnon everyday camera backpack doesn't have that. They opted to have an extra water bottle pocket. But to me, I kind of prefer still to have this extra pocket on a bag like this. And then taking a look at the main compartment, Again, you have the toe straps that you need to loosen up. You can access this via the top and you have the roll top, which I'm gonna talk about now. And then you also have a clamshell style opening. So we'll take a look at that afterwards. But as far as the roll top, things are pretty much the same as they were in the original. And I really like the implementation that Wandered has. It's always been one of the easier roll tops to access. This kind of metallic or aluminum hook feels very durable and rugged. It's easy to get in and out of the roll top openings. That can be one of the problems with roll tops is that it's cumbersome to get in and out of the bag, but it works well here. You have some Velcro to kind of help keep everything a little bit more secure and add that weather resistance. And opening this up, if you need to grab stuff via the top, you can do so. Because this has a black interior lining, it can get a little cavernous in there and hard to see. Uh, but here you can get a sense for just how much volume you get when you open up the roll tops. Moving into the clamshell style opening so that you can see everything on the inside a little bit easier. It has the zipper that opens up fully flat so you can get a good view into the inside. And here's where there's some more changes that are a little bit more obvious. The first one being that there's no zipper here to um, separate the camera cube area from the rest of the bag. On the prior version, when you open this up, there was an extra zipper that seemed a little bit kind of cumbersome or unnecessary so I really like that that's been removed it's just cleaner and it allows me to reach whatever I need to a little bit more quickly and then taking a look at the flap the company has added some nice organizational options here that weren't on the previous version so really like to see that and these offer more volume that I was anticipating from when I originally saw the promo video for this so that was nice to see it makes them a little more usable so at the bottom you have this kind of a larger longer compartment where I tossed in this little uh, kit from Pete's Pirate Life that has some Band-Aids and ointment. Then I also tossed in a little manicure kit and a pen because I didn't really have a place to put that anywhere else in the bag. And then uh, you have two smaller pockets along the top, kind of covered here by this Velcro flap. You can open the compartments without moving that. Um, and these are equally sized. And again, they're not super bulky compartments, so you won't be able to put a large accessory, uh, but it still has enough volume for some of the items that I normally like to carry with me. So in this one here on the right, I just tossed in a pair of wired headphones that I like to have in case my Bluetooth headphones run out of battery. And then on the one on the left here, I just tossed in a little memory card for my phone. Uh, and then a little tablet stand that I like to have with me. So just kind of a nice place to store some smaller items. And then of course you have this Velcro flap that holds the tablet and the laptop in place. And so this is gonna be able to hold up to an 11 uh, inch tablet, a full size tablet. I currently just have an iPad mini and that kind of gets swallowed up by the compartment. So more than enough space. 
And on the inside of this tablet pocket, you have the same soft fleece lining that we saw on the quick access pocket at the top. So that's great for preventing scratching. I also like that the tablet sleeve has some padding. And then moving on to the laptop sleeve, this also offers a nice amount of protection. The sleeve is well padded. Unfortunately, on the inside, you don't have the same fleece lining that you have on the tablet sleeve. So I'm not sure why that was left off. It would have been great to have that in both of the compartments. Regardless though, it's nice that this sleeve is pulled off a little bit off the bottom of the ground. So if you place your bag down a little bit harder, it should be protected. And this is gonna be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop. Currently what I have here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro. And uh, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. So again, no sort of fleece lining. And this does come up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here okay. And in general, I just think it does a great job of making me feel like my device is gonna be protected while I'm running around throughout the day. The last thing I'll mention while I'm on the flap is that you have these little attachment points here at the top and then also on the inside of the main area. And if you see the original video that I did for the Provoke, you can see how this pairs with Wanderer's accessory strap so that you can actually wear the bag on the front and open this up and you have like a little mobile camera station. So it's a really interesting idea. I don't, I'd be curious to hear how much people use that, especially with the larger versions of the bag. So again, just more flexibility provided by those accessory straps. And then moving into the main compartment, you have kind of this bucket style area um, that can be divided up into two compartments. At the moment, I just have it as one because that's gonna allow me to store some of the taller items that I normally like to carry with me. So I have my Levitate portable standing desk or whenever I take my portable monitor, I need this to be opened up completely so that I can use it. And then taking a look at some of the other items that I have in here, because this has kind of an open space, it's good for holding bulkier items. And I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones in here with their hard case. I also have the Tombin handy little thing pouch that has a lot of my dongles and chargers and other tech accessories. And then because I had leftover space due to the roll top, I also tossed in this compressible packing cube from Nomadic. And even with that packing cube in there, there was still a lot of leftover capacity. I didn't even have to open up the roll top to be able to fit all of that stuff in there. So really like the amount of space offered. Again, even with this 21 liter size, it offers a lot of flexibility with what you can carry. Opening the roll top up, I can even put in one of my larger packing cubes, an extra pair of shoes, my dop kit, maybe an extra packing cube, and then I could use this for you know a weekend trip, even a longer trip if I pack a little bit more minimally. And that's with the bag just kind of in this one compartment configuration. But then you also have this Velcro divider that you can separate and then attach at the top. There's a little Velcro on the side of this flap. And now you have two separate compartments if you prefer to have everything a little bit more separated. So you have this flap here that opens up to give you access to this top compartment and also to the roll top if you wanna keep your camera gear separate from kind of your EDC gear. And then here you can either use this as is or you can pair it with a camera cube. Wandered again, doesn't sell it with the base level of the backpack, but they do have the combos. I just fit in the camera cube from the original Provoke, which still works here. And it has, you know, just a few of the items that I normally have. I don't have an intensive camera layout, but I like their particular camera cubes as they feel very rugged, but also they offer a lot of configurability so you can organize it in the way that's gonna fit your gear the best. And then you can pair that with this side zipper again to be able to reach your devices quickly. So really love the flexibility offered by this bag, not just as a camera bag, but also as an EDC bag. It's still one of the best for people that have to carry a lot of gear, camera gear in my opinion. And if you're looking for a backpack that's gonna offer a ton of weather resistance and that's gonna be with you for a long time to come, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the updated version of the Wander Provoke. And you can currently purchase this on a Wandered site for about $200 for the 21 liter version featured in this bag. At that price point, that's only for the bag. It doesn't include the camera cube, the accessory straps, waist straps, any of those things that Wandered sells. They do have bundles that'll help you save some money if you purchase them all together. And the bag is sold in a few different sizes. They have the light version, a 31 liter version, and a 41 liter version. So each of those is gonna vary a little bit in price. At $200, I think you know it's a bit of an investment, but it's still a reasonable price considering the features and build quality that the bag has to offer. And it also compares well to other similar camera bags in this price range. 
And so as I was testing this out, the first bag that this made me think of is Wandered's Duo Day Pack, which to me is kind of the ideal camera bag as I don't really carry that much gear with me on a regular basis. I love that it has Wandered's aesthetic and the weather resistant materials that they love to use in their products. It has a ton of awesome organizational options. Their infinity zipper is really cool for being able to access anything that you need from pretty much any angle has a spot for your laptop, it's got a good aesthetic. And so if you like Wandered's aesthetic and you're looking for a simpler camera bag, and that's gonna be one of the best options that you can check out. The next bag this made me think of is the Brevity Roamer 2, which is another really robust camera bag that I'm a big fan of. I actually prefer the aesthetic of that bag a little bit. I think this one has the better build quality. It just feels a little bit more rugged as far as the external material, but that one also has just a really robust camera cube. It opens up flat. It has a side access pocket so you can grab your camera quickly. And it's just gonna be a really solid option if you want something with a little bit of a different aesthetic but having the same functionality that comes in at a similar price point. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Moment Travel Wear Collection, which we also reviewed recently. And that is a really interesting system. I love the camera bag that they have as it's not really a camera backpack, it's more of a daily bag that you can place a camera cube into. So for someone like me that doesn't always have a camera with them and when I do carry a camera, it's a little bit of a lighter kind of loadout. And that bag is gonna be a fantastic option. It just looks like a regular minimal bag. It has a spot for your laptop, a great organizational layout. It's not gonna be as robust or comfortable as something like this. So if you do have a lot of delicate equipment that you need to carry or you want a little bit more comfort, it's not gonna have some of those nice features that this one has. But the camera cube that they offer for the Moment Collection is pretty rugged, it feels durable, it's gonna offer a nice amount of space for a minimal setup, and it's nice that you can just you know, place it into your bag whenever you do need your camera, but you can leave it at home if you just want a versatile bag. So I definitely recommend you check that collection out if you're looking for a versatile backpack that you can use as a camera bag but that's not necessarily dedicated for that purpose. With that being said, the updated version of the Provoke holds up really well against all those bags and to me is still one of the most versatile and durable bags that you can get if you need to carry a lot of camera gear. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the updates that have been made to the Provoke line of bags and how it compares to some of the other great camera bags that are currently on the market. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you found this video helpful, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.